Hey there guys, Jacob here with Mystery Arts Inc. And today, we are gonna be talking cameras. What you do need, what you don't need, and what you might want to take as your path to looking and trying to create better videos for your brand, your content, or just for fun. Let's get right into it. Okay, so most of you have reached out to me regarding this subject. You wanna know what camera are you using, Jake? How are, you, how are you collecting these vibrant, great images that are just so quality and detailed? Well, I might be tooting my own horn a little bit in that, but that is generally the responses I get. My videos get good responses because they look good. Your videos can do that as well. I'm gonna tell you about what my progression was through doing video uh, and everything else. Some of the tools I don't even have anymore because the first video I shot for Mystery Arts Inc. They were interviews. They were shot from a laptop camera. I think it got maybe 480p resolution, which is standard definition like during the early 2000s to late 90s. They weren't very good quality. The audio on them was terrible. You can go back through and see them. I remember reviewing with Jeremy's mind, things like that, just using his laptop camera because it's all I had available to me, but I just wanted to create. Then from there, I remember I upgraded to a GoPro. That was a GoPro Hero 4 Silver Edition, which I never used to record any videos really because it didn't look good, it didn't sound good. Now the new GoPros like the 8 and this one here is the 7, uh, they do a really great job. They get great audio and things out of them, but it's not good enough in my opinion for me to use them for trying to convey a brand message or anything like that. These are more cameras that you hide or you use for an up, uh, above angle, things like that. They're not really meant to be used as main cameras and I don't think they should be. A lot of people, some people may vlog on these. I don't think it's good because their 1080 is not that good. Their 4K is just okay. The bit rates are not very high. Bit rates being the amount of information in each image for each second of filming. For example, if you had a bit rate of 100 megabits per second, which is pretty standard, it's okay, uh, that's what the Sonys can generally do, you would effectively have 100 megabits every second to work with. So if you had 24 frames per second, you'd have effectively approximately a little bit under four megabits per image. That's okay. 30 frames, you're getting less, 60, you're getting less, and so on and so on and so on. Versus cameras like I shoot on typically have bit rates of sometimes 400 megabits per second, which I think makes the biggest difference in quality, especially, but only if you really know how to use and have a device that can handle editing those files. So GoPros, they're okay. It was the second thing I used very, very briefly, but it was nothing that I was, I would ever use for main footage cameras. That's when I switched to an iPhone. So I heard so much about iPhones. I remember I was 23, I bought an iPhone 6S. Now I used that for a long time. I didn't understand frame rates. I didn't understand exposure. I didn't understand anything or any concepts. I just thought, yeah, this can be automatically do it good. But then you have exposure changes that look very not professional. You have uh, bad audio because you're just using the audio out of your iPhone and it doesn't sound good at all in my opinion. You have issues like choppy frame rates because your iPhone doesn't have an adjustable aperture. It essentially changes the shutter speed to make your video look like it's exposed correctly. So it does auto exposure, but it does it that way or increases the ISO just slightly or heavily, depending on where and what you're shooting. And ISO definitely degrades an image and adds a lot of grain to it, which doesn't look professional unless you're using professional grains you add in yourself, which I don't really ascribe to personally, that film grain kind of look. Um, yeah, so iPhone was just not the answer either. Now, I do sometimes use my iPhone 10 just to collect, you know, take pictures, to collect different video that's just kind of, you know, out and about where I don't have a professional DSLR on me. The best camera you have is the one you always have on you, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's the most quality camera and what you should be using to convey things about your brand. 
that and hand holding an iPhone, no matter what stabilization it's got, whatever, in my opinion, always looks terrible. It might expose correctly, but it'll be choppy. It might do a lot of things, but it never looks like you really should be looking if you're a pro. So iPhones, I will say yes and no to if you know what you're doing. I'll go into that later on. The first DSLR I bought, professional camera, was this one. This is a T6i Rebel. This thing uh, came with a kit lens, has the flip out screen, because I want to do some vlogging on the Joby Gorilla Pod, which is now holding this camera over here up. And it's a great little camera. It has, a, you don't, I don't think you ever want to use the pop-up flash in my opinion, but it's got one. You can change the lenses out. So you can see it's got the mirror in there, which is what makes DSLR, DSLR a DSLR. Whole nine yards. The bit rates out of this are okay. They're better than the GoPro in my opinion, and from what I've researched. You definitely get a more cinematic look just from using something even like this that's not even a close to a pro level camera. You can take great pictures with it. It's good enough for that. For video, you only have 24 frames per second, so if you wanna do more cinematic stuff, you wanna have slow-mo, things like that, you're not really gonna get it with this guy. It does okay for video. It got me started. It limited me enough to get creative and that was really important, but as is, it's just okay. The image stabilization in most of the Canon lenses is the way to go, but the real selling point for me on Canon, and still is in a lot of way, even though I use Panasonic when I'm doing professional shooting, is mainly their autofocus. You can hand somebody, it's a complete idiot, this camera, to film you just talking to it, and as long as it's locked onto your face, it's gonna stay in focus and it'll track you very reliably. It's a really nice feature that most of the Canons have. I would recommend a Canon for anybody starting out because it's just the best way to start getting in your feet wet into the video field. So Canon T6i Rebel, recommended if you're extreme beginner. Now, the recommendation I have above that for beginners is this guy. This is where I started really souping up my game when it comes to um, doing video. This is the Canon M50. Now this piece right here is not normally on here. This is the Rode um, Wireless Go. I have it on here because I'm recording the sound externally through this camera right now. And the reason you'll find out at the end here. And this is a very nice camera. It's got interchangeable lenses. It primarily takes the M mount lenses but with a simple adapter or speed booster it can take full frame or the EFS lenses or the EF lenses by the Canon company line. So it's very great. I got some great images out of this. I think almost everything, literally everything actually you saw in my demo reel on my site was shot out of this. I shot most, I've shot most of my projects with these Canons and the really professional stuff I'm doing for other people, I tend to shoot with my GH5, which we'll get to in a moment. This guy is only about $599. This is the best bang for your buck for a starter camera you're gonna get, period. I don't care what anybody else says, or they say go Sony or go this or that. Don't do it. They're, they're gonna be a lot of work in post versus Canon's colors come out great as long as you know your settings and do them appropriately. Very recommend on the Canon M50. I'll link all of these cameras down below, by the way. The links are affiliate links. Yes, I get a small kickback for you using that link, but it's at no extra cost to you, and I promise you, I'm finding and researching the best deals possible for you guys to make sure you can get started doing this. Canon M50, best one I'm gonna recommend this video for you out there beginning. If you know what you're doing, and after you've had a Canon M50, you've used it for a while, you've started to do more intricate things, you've learned how to manual focus because it's got focus peaking on it, that's something really unique to the Canon M50 for a entry level camera, then you can step up to play and get one of these guys maybe. This is about $1,500 and it is the GH5. It's now two years old and it's still one of the kings of cameras on the market. It's amazing. This thing never ceases to amaze me. The images on it are so great. The bit rates are so high. The colors on it are not quite as equivalent to Canon, but they're almost there. And as a colorist, the files are so big and it shoots 10 bits, so I can go all over the place to make the colors look vibrant and wonderful. I'm not gonna talk much about this guy other than just showing it to you. This is what we shoot most of the content on this channel with now 
is the Canon 50 unless we're doing multi-cam work or anything like that. And I recommend this to professionals only. If you think that you've got what it takes to become professional, you can go ahead and jump into it, but I think you'll be frustrated and you find out the autofocus is nearly useless. The settings and things on it are hard to learn and use, and you really know how to set your camera to use one of these properly. So end rants about that. So now I promised you here there's be a special twist at the end of this video. The twist is this. I've been recording this whole video with an iPhone. It's why we have external audio recording. There is a way to, pl to plug these Rode Wireless Go mics into the iPhone, but I don't have the proper attachments on hand, so I scrapped the idea of just been recording externally by letting the M50 roll. Now, this is an important thing. Some of you watching this are going, wow, okay, this is shot on an iPhone, it looks great, so why earlier were you telling me that I shouldn't use an iPhone? There's a reason iPhones don't have as high bitrate footage. Now, bearing in mind, I haven't seen the new iPhone 11. I've seen some of the footage from it, but if you watch all the vlogs talking about, or the videos talking about the footage, you'll notice that none of them are using an iPhone to do their work. Because an iPhone does not project the quality necessary. If you're filming a quick testimonial and you have one of those external mics or something like this for the iPhone, sure but be steady, learn how to hold a camera, and do it properly and expose it properly so it looks coherent and on brand with all of your other professional footage you'll be shooting with the tips you're getting from these videos. Now, some of you are saying, well, the iPhone shoots 4K, it shoots 4K 60. You said that was something that, you know, is really, uh, yes, it does that. It doesn't mean that it does the best job at it. The best camera you can have is the one you have on you. Chances are that's the iPhone, but that doesn't mean it's going to be the best camera to show the quality of your work, your brand, and who you are. All that being said, I know it's a lot to think about. We've covered simple lighting, as you can see here in our last video, we still have our key light going right here, our background lights. We have more natural light coming in right now because we are indoors, and unfortunately it's harder to block out light in my apartment and I wanted a little extra light since we are gonna be using an iPhone where I had to set the settings custom. For those of you that do wanna use an iPhone, you need to invest in a certain app. This is called the Filmic, F-I-L-M-I-C Pro app. This app will open up your iPhone. It's about $16, $17, I believe, at the time of recording this. There's an extra fee in there to unlock the other stuff in it, which you need to do. But this app will allow you to lock things that are very important, like shutter speed, ISO, your focus. It allows you to set your color balance and lock that. It has different filming modes. For example, this is filmed in the Log V2, which Log, is, in my opinion, is not very useful for iPhone shooting because the bit rate's not high enough to justify it. And it's only 8-bit, but I did it anyway just to make sure I has as much flexibility in post as possible with this image. Filmic Pro will definitely make your iPhone videos look substantially better. Remember, do locked off shots than iPhone or use a gimbal. And if you buy a gimbal and you use a gimbal, don't think you're gonna be a master at it right away. And don't try and get too crazy with it. Very smooth movements where you're using your body more than the gimbal in your hands. And sometimes you just need a locked off shot and that's it. That's one of the most important lessons I can give you for video production. Sometimes just a locked off shot does the job and focus on that at least starting out. Once you get more advanced, you can start adding in more motion. You can start having your training your cameraman or whatever to do more, but doing more in your B-roll as well. But for right now, just stick with what works because that's what's gonna benefit you the most. Wow, this is a long video, I know, but thank you all for tuning in, staying with me. I noticed my analytics that most of you watching this aren't subscribed, so if you aren't, go ahead and subscribe down below. Ding dong, ditch that bell. Don't be a ding dong, well, you know. And keep an eye out for our next video where we'll be covering audio solutions. We'll then be covering things like setting your camera, making sure you've got appropriate motion and everything. Two of the most important things in this mini course I'm developing for magicians, mentalists, and content creators that just want to get a better image.
with less equipment. Less is more, knowledge is power, utilize it. So thank you all for watching, and once again, I'll see you next time.